So now we've got a better idea of the application that we're about to build, let's get started working on it. I think the best place to start is going to be working on this header component right here. Remember, we organize our React applications into a series of different components. So we're going to make a single component called the header component, whose sole purpose is going to be to sit at the top of the application and show the text albums. Now we've already figured out how to show text in React Native, so chances are the biggest challenge here is going to be figuring out how to style it nicely. You know, how to make the text nice and big, how to center it, and how to make a nice header all around it. So that's going to be our big challenge here. So let's get started. In a React Native application, we always create one component per file. So one component per file. Inside of my index.ios.js file, I've already got a single component located in here. So to create a new component, I will make a new JavaScript file to house it. That means that for uh, the larger our application gets, you know, the more components we make, the more files we're going to be working with at one time, which is totally fine. It's something that you're going to get used to. To create my new component and the new file that goes along with it, I'm going to place it inside of a new directory in my project folder. So in my project folder, I'm going to create a new folder called src. And the thought here is that I'm going to place all of the code that I write for my application inside of this src file. It just helps, or excuse me, folder. It just helps create division or, you know, kind of separate from all the boilerplate that got generated with React Native versus the code that specifically, you know, we write and we uh, intend to be used with our application. Secondly, inside of this src folder, I want to make another folder called components. So I'll make another folder called components. And this is where I'm going to make all the different components that we're going to use inside of our application. As we start making more uh, complex applications, we'll have other folders inside this src one that have radically different jobs. And so that's why I like to make this second one just to say, hey, specifically in here, this is where all my components go. And that's pretty much it. OK, so now inside of here, last step, we'll make a new file to house our header component. So I'll make a new file called header.js. So this is it. This is where we're going to make our header component. And the purpose of this header component is to just show a nice rectangle with some text inside of it that says albums. That's it. That's all we're trying to accomplish here. So to get started, we'll kick off with the same three steps that we used inside of index iOSJS. First, we will import libraries for making, for making a component. Then we will make a component. Finally, we will make the component available to other parts of the app. Notice here that I changed the uh, comment a little bit, right? Whereas in the index file I said rendered on the screen of the device, this time around I'm saying, well, I don't really want to like immediately render it to the screen of the device. I just want other parts of the application to be able to use this component and reference it. And so we'll figure out exactly what I mean by that when we get to step number three here. So let's start off with step number one at the very top. We will import some libraries for making a component. And we're going to uh, import the same two that we did last time. We're going to import React and React Native. So we'll import React from React. And then we'll import React Native from ah, React Native. There we go. And notice that ESLint is immediately unhappy with this because, hey, we're not actually referencing these uh, variables here. That's totally fine. We'll make use of them in just a moment. So step number two, we need to create our component. As a rule of thumb, when we create the component, we will always name it a function that is the same as the file that it's placed in. So we're inside of header.js. Therefore, we're going to create a component called header. And we'll make our component, which is a fatero function. And then from here, we're going to return some amount of JSX to render. And you'll notice that this time, I'm not going to use the uh, parentheses right away. That's totally fine. You know, I'm going to, again, kind of vary through styles throughout the entire course on exactly how this looks. Uh, it's really up to you. There's not a super solid convention. Well, actually, I take that back. The convention is throughout the community, whenever you've got a single line of JSX, you just put the return statement on the same line. If you have a multi-line statement of JSX, that's when you'll start to use the parentheses. So 
you know, I've got kind of obviously a little bit of foresight on exactly how many lines of JSX we're going to make. So throughout the course, I'm going to seemingly randomly either use parentheses and put everything on a new line, or sometimes I won't. But you know, we'll see. So we got the text tag here, and then inside the text tab tag, we'll place some amount of text to show to the user. So I'm just going to say albums, Ray. Now immediately I'm using a text tag right here. So I'm going to pull the text tag out of the React Native library. So I'm going to delete React Native at the top, and we're going to do a destructured import to import the text component. And immediately all those errors go away, and we're left with just, hey, text albums. Cool. Finally, on to step three here. We need to make sure this component is available to other areas of the application. So this is where things you know, start to get a little bit of interesting. Back inside the index file, we registered this component using the app registry. But I'm saying that this time around, inside the header, I want to do things a little bit differently. So let's figure out exactly why that is by looking at a diagram really quick. So this is a diagram of our component hierarchy, or all the different components we have in our application. As I've mentioned several times before, a normal React application will have many different components created for it, each one a reusable widget that we can make use of in several different locations. So when we join all these components together, they form a tree of sorts, where the very first component to be rendered to the screen is what we refer to as the root component. So right now, because the first component that gets rendered to the screen is the app component, we refer to it as the root component. So the app is the root component. Then every other component that the app one shows is referred to as a child component. So pretty soon, we're going to tell the app component to show the header one. So we'll refer to the header as a child component. So coming back around to this whole concept of you know, all these import and export statements and the app registry, all that kind of stuff, well, basically I got the text on here. Only the root component uses app registry. That's the only time we use the app registry is for the most top level, most parent component. It's the component that we want to show first on the device. And it's up to that app component to decide everything that needs to be displayed to the user. For every other component that we create, for, so for every child component that we create in our application, instead of registering it with that app registry, we export it using ES6 syntax. So just as we have used import statements at the very top of our file, we will also use export statements at the bottom. Export statements you can kind of think of as meaning, hey, I want to make this component, the header component, usable to other areas of our application as well. That's the whole idea behind this export statement. So at the bottom, we will write export default header. So again, this means take that component. I want other files within our project to be able to make use of it. So let's now continue in the next section and figure out how to make use of an exported component. <laughs>